great with Lit Fitness. I'm coming at you. This is a video specifically for those Weight Watchers rock stars that came out uh, to my presentation just the other day. So I'm really glad. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you. It was a great event. I'm, I'm really uh, encouraged to uh, go talk with uh, so uh, so many of you guys. So here's your workout video. Really awesome workout video that you can just kind of do at your own. Now, first and foremost, of course, we're always uh, approaching you at, let's start with a, uh, the lowest level that we can start with and progress from there. For some of us, uh, lowest level will be like a level one. Some of us will be like a level three. So I'm gonna approach this uh, since it's for everybody at a level one and start helping you move better. So first and foremost, what we're gonna be working on, now I'm not set up right next to the wall, but you're gonna wanna do this right against the wall because we're gonna be working on proper movement patterns. The way the body works is we wanna work on some stability in the foot. So we're going to work on stability on the foot by balancing on one leg uh, and we're going to just bend over and try to touch down to the ground or as low as we can. Now that might be just right about here or so and then back up and try to stay balancing. Now balancing is uh, a skill that is specific to whatever you're doing. Here we're just balancing on one leg. Uh, but we're working on stability within the foot and stability of the foot is the pinky toe, the, the big toe and the heel of the foot evenly distributing that weight between all three points. And so you can see here, I'm barefoot. I really like to do this barefoot and try to take out as much as the external help that I can, like the arch support of, all, uh, of many tennis shoes out there. Dig that heel into the ground and raise it back up. So this is just a nice little uh, single leg toe touch uh, from a side view, balancing on that one leg, reach it down or as low as you can, all the way to the point where we touch down on that toe, and back up. And again, if you need weight or if you need uh, some stability, seek some additional stability by touching onto that wall uh, and seeing if we can still kind of maintain, because that is your biggest uh, focus, maintain that tripod foot. Big toe, pinky toe, heel the foot, evenly distributing that weight. What we don't want to see is the caving of the foot, uh, and you'll see that in the knee, uh, or the opening of uh, that arch where it's kind of rolling on the outside. All right, so that's what we're going to be working on first and foremost. We'll work on that stability. Now, now we're going to start uh, hitting up a little bit of uh, the quads. So what we're going to do is position ourselves in a box squat. Now this is 18 inches high, which is your standard kitchen chair height. So we're going to get nice and close. We have a box, so our heels flat against it or as close to it as possible. And what we're going to do is arms outstretched as far as possible. We're going to sit down into that squat so that those knees stay well behind those toes. Keep those heels to the ground and stand back up. Now this is also the same height as your normal uh, car chair, also the same height as your normal toilet. So we squat all the time. So if your doctor's telling you, hey, you shouldn't be squatting, then he's telling you you shouldn't be getting down to, the, to your bed, you shouldn't be getting into your chairs, you shouldn't be doing anything. And I think that's quite ridiculous. So we need to start training on how to do a proper squat. This is how we're going to do it. That's way too easy. You're just going to sit back with the arms down by your side, or you can genie it out like so. Nice and easy. Now we want to make sure we sit softly into the hips and sit softly onto the chair. We want to weight on top of those heels, and that's how we're going to train to use less knees and use more of the posterior chain, which is our butt, our hamstrings, and right down into those heels. Nice and soft. So, a nice little box squat. From here, another really good exercise that you can start working on. Push that out of the way. It's called a plank. Your plank is going to have you down on the ground in a uh, four-point position on top of those elbows, like so. You're going to pack that chin, which just means you're pulling the head back. We're going to squeeze the butt as much as we can without actually rounding the back, but we do not want to see those hips sagging down to the ground. So keep them up tall. Ideally, we've got earlobes, shoulders, hips, and ankles in one straight line from here, and you're going to hold that position. And you're going to hold that for as long as you possibly can manage. Now, this is another really great exercise. It's going to start working on more stability. Stability in the trunk and in the torso. So after you can manage to hold that for, uh, I would say, upwards of 45 to 60 seconds, then you can progress the plank. That exercise itself should probably not be held for anything longer than 60 seconds if, you, uh, if you're able to. It's time to move on to the next exercise or the next progression for that one. Uh, so after that one, we're going to hit the other side on the uh, foot for the single leg stability work. Balancing on one leg, you're going to reach down, try to touch that toe, and back up. Now, lastly, what I'm going to give you once you nail all of those is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, bridge. So we're going to 
get back down onto that ground, we're going to flip it around, and we're going to work the posterior chain yet one more time. Feet in line with those hips. Toes are going to be facing straight down, and hands on top of those hips. You're going to take those heels into the ground and raise those hips up as high as you possibly can manage. Squeeze the butt and relax. You draw the hips back down to the ground. So hands on top of the hips, or the palms face up right next to the hips. Now. We want to make sure those hips are well off that ground. We want to make sure that we're cutting out rib flares. So if we can see the ribs start poking through, we're going to engage those abs just a little bit tighter, squeeze the butt a little bit more, uh, and relax as we draw everything back down to the ground. Hips will rest, drive it back up. And we're going to finish it up with the last big bone right here. This is uh, an exercise that when I talk to most of my clients, they're, they're thinking to themselves, they're telling me, Coach, I really want to perform a push-up. And the best way to start working on a push-up is to start pushing it up. So we're going to start on top of those knees, hands directly underneath the chest, and I'm going to show you how to do a correct push-up. From here, the elbows need to be kind of pointing away from the body. They should not be pointing straight out 90 degrees. We want to bring them in at about a 35 to 45 degree angle, somewhere right uh, down there. You want those hips to rest on the ground. From here, you're going to drive those palms, push those palms into the ground, raise it up, Relax as we let everything sink back down to the ground. We will rest there for one second. In fact, for many of my clients, I'll make them take those hands up off the ground, reset it, hands right next to the chest, push the palms back into the ground, face it back up, back down slow, and control it. Uh, of course, when you can master this movement, that's when you're going to go into those. Uh, and you're really only looking for about 10 reps of each. I would do that set the entire circuit just like we demonstrated right there. I would do that for uh, two to three sets when we're just starting out. And once you can master that for about three sets, three continuous sets with only about a 30 to 60 second break after finishing your push-ups, you could go back through, hit uh, the uh, single leg toe touch, go into the squat, uh, go into single leg toe touch, go into the bridge, push-up, take another break, do that again, all of that one more time. Uh, after you can master that three times, it should take you no more than about 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, and then I will start moving on to more difficult exercises for that and start challenging the body in new and different ways. This is great for lifting. Thank you for checking out our video. I've got a couple more links right down there. If this uh, workout, if you're ready to progress to something a little bit tougher and you've got some good balance and some great stability, which is absolutely imperative when we have those uh, uh, good movement patterns, that's when we can start moving to the more advanced movements. Just click that link right down there. There's also Get Lit Fit, that link right down there as well. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we have to offer to you here in Blue Springs. Thank you again. This is great with fitness. Have a phenomenal day.